Hello everyone, this is Pecan Entertainment and we are back again and we're now going to do a season finale review of Batwoman, the 20th episode within this first season titled Oh Mouse and as with all of the CW DC superhero shows due to the effects of the COVID-19, a lot of them which had the quota of 22 episodes they were unable to reach that quota and finish off the completed seasons They've kind of had to close the seasons off early, which means some storylines have kind of had to be shoehorned into these finale episodes and some have had to be left behind in order to be completed at a later date. So when I'm doing these reviews, I'm always going to have or leave some sort of consideration because the stories that we see here may not be originally the ones that the writers want to have throughout the season. Okay, so... We're going to go into spoiler details now for this season finale of Batwoman. So if you haven't seen it yet, turn off now, watch the episode and then come back to this review. So we picked up from the events from last episode, which involved Alice and Mouse obtaining the journal, which Kate used in exchange along with the glasses to save Luke's life along with Sophie and Therefore, Alice now has the glasses so she can use that to decipher the code within a journal and then they find out that the secret to disarming the bat suit is kryptonite. So that's what she wants to do. We also see now that the convicts have now escaped Arkham and they are now running riots. And also Jacob, he had in that final scene declaring war against Batwoman, which obviously heightens the tension since Batwoman, as we all know, is Kate. So we begin this episode, we have a fight scene on the train. One of the evictees called Titan has escaped. Um, big, tall black man, he's got these twin kind of blades on here, and he fights Jacob in the beginning. And I just wondered quickly, because Jacob was on his own, there was no platoon or squad with him. And then Kate also comes on the train in her normal clothes, trying to fight him. Again, I, I don't know why, apparently she was waiting in the car, if she was going to encounter Titan, why didn't she go away, put the bat suit on and come back? So I think this might have been one of those elements where they've had to shorten the scene, cut a few scenes out and just go straight into the fight. There might have been further build up towards the sequence, I suspect, on here. So we carry on and we see that Alice is trying to read the journal constantly. Mouse is showing his intentions that he wants to leave. He wants them to go to the... The beautiful garden i think or something like that and they want to start off a new life but alice is obviously hell-bent on getting revenge against kate and mouse is worried because now everybody's on the alert during the recent offense and he's worried that people are going to use their apps which is eventually going to draw them to their whereabouts so we carry on and we see luke with kate and luke's working on destroying the kryptonite which affects the bat suit again i've never subscribed to that idea why does kryptonite have to affect the bat suit why would you build the bat suit to have that weakness again that's just convenience I'll, I'll mention that later on but again it's just i don't know why the kryptonite has to affect the bat suit so we go forward and we see later on that hush resurfaces and he talks to alice and mouse complaining about how he wants his face to be replaced so Alice goes out to get that replacement Mouse doesn't like that but Hush is very kind of eager now and desperate to get his face replacement on here Alice we see out in the streets he eventually visits the doctor looking for more kryptonite the doctor reveals that the last sample of kryptonite was handed over to Lucius Fox okay Beth accepts this or Alice accepts this and so she hits the doctor over the head and then she obtains whatever she can from the medical center we continue on and Luke is continually testing the kryptonite Batwoman goes over to see Titan's brother who is this promising young college athlete and we see that Titan originally was kind of a caring person he used to take care of the kids walk them to school but he has these grievances against the coach. And then shortly after, Titan shows up at the stadium. He fights Black Woman and he manages to overpower her. And I'm glad they did this because I know one common complaint of the show throughout is that how can Kate able to overthrow all of these various thugs and 
crooks are like when they're a lot bigger than her. So I'm glad that they didn't have her kind of just out muscling him. You know, he's throwing her around. He's constantly battering her. And I think that's just good that they actually kept some sort of realism or plausibility throughout on here. So she he overpowers Kate and then he throws the blade into the back of his brother, critically injuring him, and then he disappears. So... We can move on forward with the storyline on here. Jacob is now constantly obsessed with catching Batwoman. They're back at the house and they're discussing their plans. How can they get the kind of crows to work together? Because that's what's required. So Mary comes up with a plan to highlight the back signal, which draws all of the crows to the top of the building. And she puts the phone onto... Jacob talks to Batwoman. Jacob initially re rejects the offer, but then later on, Mary reveals that it was her that set up this plan to begin with. We get this really impassioned speech about how, you know, he should be learning to work together. And if she can see the good in Batwoman, why can't he? And then that's when they agree to work together. We get this critical scene now. Now, this is one scene I had an issue with. So we have Alice and Mouse reflecting on their current position, where their lives are going to head, their future, etc. And then it turns out that Alan poisons Mouse and kills him, right? Now, they were trying to sell it as, right, Alice was completely hell-bent on killing Kate and she couldn't do it if Mouse was constantly wanting to leave. That was kind of holding her back, weighing her down and she was forced to choose between Mouse and getting her revenge. So she had to kill Mouse to kind of rid of herself of that last kind of connection weighing her down. Now the problem I had is, is that Mouse has been the one true connection to Alice that stuck with her throughout, right? They've built up connections with Kate throughout and even there was a couple of episodes where there was a hint of her maybe finding some reconciliation with Jacob. But as we know, both potentials for the relationships between Jacob and Kate and broken down with Alice. Mouse has been the one constant who stuck with her, fit with Finn throughout, wanting to support her throughout, right? So why would you kill that support system, right? For Alice to just kill him out of the blue like that, that leaves her on her own. She's got no one else supporting her. Okay, she's been working with Hush, but Hush clearly has his own intentions and the like. He doesn't have the same devotion and loyalty to Alice that mouse did so why would you kill her off it just me made no sense and they tried to have the scene stuck out they prolonged it they had this emotional music they tried to make it stick but again i think this is one element that maybe there was further build up and if this ran on for the original i think 22 episodes i think we would have got much more build up to this moment by having it just happen behind the blue i think it was kind of a bit telegraphed when they're having this long discussion and it's one of those moments when a character is leading you to one way and then all of a sudden they turn around and do something different. So you could kind of predict it, but I just think it was, I don't know, it didn't prove valid for me. I just think we needed more on that. You know, it was kind of well acted on there, but it just didn't really land for me. I just think there was more development needed for that moment. Again, I couldn't understand the character, why Alice felt she had to kill him. If you wanted to knock him unconscious or put him under some sort of sedative while you go about your plans, fair enough, and then you can catch up with him later on. But to kill him, I just think, no, that didn't work for me as such. So we move on, and Batwoman and the Crows have set up a trap for Titan at the stadium. They're all surrounding the perimeter, but then Titan kills the lights. He's taken out all the guards, and he encounters Batwoman, and again, overpowers her. But then she tries to reach out with him, trying to state that he was a good person. Again, makes reference to the fact that he looked after the kids and she seems to be getting to him and then all of a sudden the crows take him out batwoman isn't happy about this because obviously she could see some sort of redemption with this character and the fact that he's just killed and then we get a quite surprising moment where she's trying to reach out to jacob again of course jacob doesn't know who she is and there's a back and forth what we should be working together we could be helping the city but Jacob now, nope, he doesn't accept any kind of reconciliation and he shoots at her. And, you know, it's quite a stunning moment again because his father basically shooting at his daughter. So I actually think this is a quite good narrative that they're using. I'd, I'd actually love to see this 
narrative prolonged even further into season two. I don't think it's good to have Jacob find out who Batwoman is. I like this kind of constant tension that we have where both people want to help out crime. Kate wants to back work with him but can't she wants to protect her identity and Jacob is obviously obsessed with killing her. So there's a very good tense dynamic that we have on it. So she manages to use her grappling gun and escape the surrounding crows. We go to Sophie and Julia. They're reflecting on their relationship. And then Sophie reveals that she has been under surveillance and that she's had this person called Sophia who is after her and then she reveals the pictures that shows of her and Julia together so that can be an interesting development going on for season two as well what's Sophie's true agenda why did she break free who is this Sophia why are they after her so that's a good dangling arc that they could leave forward for season two we continue then we have a scene with Kate and Mary she's disheartened that again Jacob trying to shoot her and like I said that leaves that kind of frustrating dynamic for Kate or frustrating dilemma rather for Kate that again she can't work with her dad as she truly is she's gonna have to keep him at a certain distance Luke comes in and he's finally figured out how to destroy the kryptonite we get that humorous line when Mary says yep you used a bit hammer and he said yeah this was a you know very specialized thousand ton energetic hammer and again, I've never relied to the fact that the kryptonite makes no sense. We get the third development that Kate reveals to both to Mary and Luke that she had another shard of kryptonite, if you remember, from the crisis. Supergirl handed her the kryptonite just in case Supergirl goes rogue. Kate is that one person who's at a safe enough distance, but she can trust her to do what's necessary if we ever get that scenario. So Kate reveals this to kind of build a further connection between the two because she doesn't want any more secrets within their team as they work through. That's what she makes that revolution on there. Luke wants to destroy it, but Kate insists that no, a friend gave this to me. And I'm, I'm really surprised that Luke and Mary didn't figure that out. You know, who else could she have got the kryptonite from? It's a friend. They're well aware that they've worked together in the past within the crisis. And this is obviously now one prime earth that we're in where all the characters are coexisting so I'm, I'm just a bit surprised that luke didn't come to a realization that supergirl gave kate the kryptonite but maybe that will go forward for the season two and then we get to the big revelation which i'm sure will have everybody talking we see that alice now has reconstructed uh face for hush it's her best work it's the masterpiece and we get the reveal that Hush now has the face of Bruce Wayne and she's going to use the Bruce Wayne identity or Hush is going to use the Bruce Wayne identity to infiltrate when enterprises so they get the crucial piece of kryptonite that Alice can use to take out Kate. So this is of course really big now because it shows the fact now that we have a Bruce Wayne on the actual show of Batwoman. Now we know previously as we got with the Gotham series, that they couldn't really have Batman on a television format. We know that Warner Brothers and DC have been really strict about the use of Batman. They don't want it running concurrently with the movies. They're quite happy to have it with Superman, with, but not with Batman. That's another separate debate. Gotham, as we know, spoilers if you haven't seen Gotham, but at the end they had that one episode where the young actor who played Bruce Wayne was allowed to have the costume right at the end of the episode. So this is now, we're going to have a Bruce Wayne character going forward for season two, I guess for the long game. I don't think this will be a one episode and done deal. I think they're going to have a consistent arc within season two. Now, initially I didn't have a problem with this because it's not Bruce Wayne, is it? It's Hush. So I didn't think this is kind of them trying to have Batman in there and we might get the same complaints that a lot of people had with Supergirl where they felt Superman was brought in just to kind of be a supplementary character to Supergirl and that Supergirl was bringing Superman down. So I thought initially, well, we know this isn't Bruce Wayne, we know this isn't Batman. But then I thought about it again and I think it raises one dilemma and that is that you have Bruce Wayne now and presumably he's going to make a connection with Kate, right? 
So Bruce Wayne is going to arrive back in Wayne Enterprises. I assume it's going to be kind of a very secretive entrance. I don't think he's going to make a big announcement within Gotham that Bruce Wayne is back, right? So when he comes to Kate, the first issue or the eventual issue is going to be, why don't you be Batman again? Where have you been all this time? What have you been doing? Why don't you put on back in the suit and become Batman? We can work together, right? as Batman and Batwoman combat and crime, right? That would be the logical assumption that Kate would make and most definitely Luke would make, right? But of course, you can't really have that because if you have Batman on Gotham returning, then you don't need Batwoman anymore, right? It renders useless the use of Batwoman if you have Batman returning, right? And of course, it being a Batwoman show with Batwoman in the lead, you can't have that scenario, right? You've The whole point was Bruce had escaped or left Gotham, leaving Batwoman to have her own individual mark within Gotham, okay? Now, it's different with the Superman and Supergirl dynamic because Superman is a global spanning hero. He's all over the place, saving people all over the world. So what they did well for the most part with Supergirl is that they kept her jurisdiction within National City. So Clark can go away, save people in other places, and Supergirl can look after National City. But of course, the Batman universe is rooted primarily in Gotham. Now, if you had Kate in a different city, this would be fine because you could have Bruce presiding over Gotham and then Kate presiding over another city, looking after their crime in that. But because you've got it both in Gotham, you're going to have this scenario where, yes, Batman should return, right? Now, if Batman returns, it has to be, presumably, in a long-term capacity. You're going to have to write the scenario where Batman comes back and has to leave again. In terms of the public audience, Bruce Wayne comes back and then leaves again, right? So how are they going to explain that? How are they going to tackle that going forward? It's an interesting development, but I just think it might pose them more problems because you've now introduced... Batman or Bruce Wayne in some capacity back into this universe so you've got to explain why he's not going to use the bat suit and then you've got to explain how he's going to disappear again in terms of the public eye so that'll be an interesting aspect going forward I suppose it is a good cliffhanger was it something that I think they intended going forward for the finale episode if they managed to complement their full seasons the way they wanted to Possibly, I think we've got we would have got a much more spectacular climax. I think we would have got a, fin a cliffhanger, maybe involving Alice a bit more. In terms of a confrontation with Kate, I think we would have got one, one more big intense fight scene between the two if they managed to do the season proper. So it at least is a clever cliffhanger because at the very least, regardless of what people feel about the show they will tune in for that season premiere to see how this Bruce Wayne interpretation feels out, right? And we're going to get a lot of speculation. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of contentious debate. Are they ruining Batman again? We all know people weren't a lot happy with how Batman was depicted within a crisis. So we're going to get a lot of lively debate, which again, I think will be good for Batwoman when they go into season two. Hopefully this time... When they start the promotions, they won't try to play off any kind of feminism agenda. They'll just try and promote the story. And the big aspect of the marketing for that season will be the arrival of Bruce Wayne and how he looks and how a factor into the storyline. You could question how do they manage to get the voice and the physicality of Bruce Wayne? How does Beth do that? She can replace the face. But I've always wondered how does she replace the body shape? You know, because Hush we assume, wouldn't have the same physical attributes as Bruce Wayne. So how has she always been able to do that? Getting him to activate the voice as well. They're going to play it that Hush, obviously, was very close to Bruce, was one of his closest friends. So he's going to be well informed about Bruce's past. So he'll be able to kind of manipulate Kate into speaking about previous experiences and his life going forward. But eventually he'll slip up and that's where they'll come to realise that he's not... Bruce Wayne so that's the big interesting development so I think it was a good cliffhanger if you like for the Batwoman series on here so it'll be very interesting to see go forward so not a bad episode I think you can clearly see where this split was in terms of 
how they wanted this to be just another standard episode and then the elements later on what was going to be maybe the cliffhanger moment so i think the titan stuff was going to be extended out we were probably going to see a lot more scenes with the brother and a lot more scenes with titan trying to turn him back and redeem him <coughs> i think that's what how the episode would have played out i think all the stuff with alice and stuff would have been included in that episode that would have been involved later on in the finale so you could clearly see the break on there but yeah it was an okay episode there are various amount of questions going forward it was better paced that i think a lot of the episode like i liked jacob's character he's very well worn now and he's very obsessed throughout that was very good on there, I think, from Dougary Scott's performance. So, yeah, I actually think one of the better episodes of the season. I will do a season review later on, covering what was good and what was bad about this show. But, yeah, in terms of this episode about itself, not bad. And I think in terms of a finale, given the circumstances and leaving you with a cliffhanger to get you interested for the next season, I think it did quite, you know, a decent, good job on there. So... Those are my thoughts on the season finale for Batwoman. As I just mentioned, I will do a season review and also I will do a finale review for Supergirl, which premieres very shortly, and also the premiere review for Stargirl, which also makes its debut very soon. So those are my thoughts on the Batwoman season finale. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Did you think it was a good finale given the circumstances or didn't you think it worked as well? What are your thoughts on the Bruce Wayne reveal? Does it interest you even more for season two? Or do you think it's a further kind of bastardization of the Batman character? And does that leave you again having a much more negative perception of this show? So those are my thoughts for now. Take care of yourselves. Stay at safe distances. And I will see you very, very soon.